Hi, I'm Dr. AJ Chua and welcome to Adjusting Your Heart. We talk about mental health and relationships every Friday, so please do subscribe. Chronic illness is defined by CDC as conditions that last one year or more, require ongoing medical attention, and limit activities of daily living. Examples of chronic illness include heart disease, cancer, chronic lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and chronic kidney disease. Here are three tips to help you take better care of a family member with chronic illness. Tip number one, be extra understanding. Chronic illness is very taxing on the patient. That's why extra understanding is needed. To be able to do that, put yourself into the shoes of the one who has chronic illness. Imagine how frustrated and depressing it must be for them not to be able to do the things by themselves anymore. Instead, they need to rely on others to feed or bathe them. They need someone to help them sit, stand up, walk, or push the wheelchair. When they share their thoughts and feelings, let's listen and validate them. When they feel down because they miss the things that they can do before, empathize with them. When they cry as they think about their shattered dreams, don't ask them to stop crying. Instead, allow them to cry their hearts out and comfort them. That's part of the grieving process till they reach acceptance. When they share they feel pain in certain parts of their body, don't say that they're just overreacting. Did you know that there's a certain chronic illness called fibromyalgia? Its cardinal symptoms include pain, stiffness, fatigue, and non-restorative sleep. So when someone with fibromyalgia say that he or she is in pain, let's emphasize and ask what we can do to help them alleviate the pain. That goes the same to those who are plagued with arthritis, lupus, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and ALS. Tip number two, be extra patient. Once we understand where the chronically ill family member is coming from, it's easier for us to be more patient. Sad to say, I learned this the hard way. I was only 16 years old when my mom had aneurysm. She was 45 at the time. She underwent a brain operation and was in coma for one and a half months. Of course, we thank our Lord Jesus for answering our prayers. But when she woke up and found out that she was half paralyzed, that she can't move the right side of her body, my mom got very, very frustrated. She couldn't talk, she couldn't eat through the mouth and had to use the NGT. She was so devastated that she pulled the NGT thrice. My mom was an outgoing and hardworking person, but suddenly she can't even do simple things on her own. She had to rely on us to feed, bathe her, to help her sit up. On top of that, there were many instances that we couldn't understand what she wanted. She'd get angry, shout, or throw pillows to the floor. Being immature, I also got angry. By God's grace, I learned to be more patient and our relationship gradually improved. If you want to know the details, please check our previous video entitled Three Practical Tips to Manage Anger. One point of contention with chronically ill patients is when we restrict them as to what to eat, drink, or do. Though we do this out of love, they are not happy about it. They'd argue with us and even do the exact opposite when we aren't around. In times like these, keep calm and remind them of the doctor's orders. In my parents' case, we no longer restrict them. They're both 79 years old and their philosophy is that they'd rather die happy than be deprived. For those with diabetic family members, I'd suggest that you let them eat one small piece of chocolate from time to time instead of just banning it altogether. That way, their craving is satisfied because if not, they might eat a whole bar behind your back or even ask the maid to buy Coke or other sweets. Having said this, it's best to get all the family members on board 
so that you don't get blamed if something goes wrong. When we're tired, it's easier for us to get irritated. Hence, we have to take care of our own mental, physical, and spiritual health. Make it a team effort is one of the tips I shared in our video, how to take care of our aging parents. In that video, I shared how blessed I am to have my husband Hans, my brothers Jerry and Jackson, my sister-in-law Ors, and my two nephews, JJ and OJ. That's why our family picture is used in the thumbnail. Without their help and support, I'll surely burn out. If necessary, hire a caregiver or a helper. Please remember that chronically ill patients have their cranky moods. When they complain, especially about that family member taking care of them, please don't immediately scold that person. You can ask what happened because sometimes when someone is irritated, they only remember all the wrong things that that person did, but they forget all the good things that that person did to her or to him. You can also request the patient to be courteous and be more appreciative. My mom learned how to say thank you when someone serves her, like when Hans would offer to take them out and then I'll tell her, it's Hans' idea to take you and dad out today. So what would you say? Then my mom said, thank you. Of course, Hans, upon hearing, will also be happy. So again, let's be extra patient when the chronically ill family member is grouchy. Tip number three, be extra caring. Go out of your way to serve them. Think of what they need before they ask. For bedridden patients, turn them from side to side every two hours to prevent bed sore. In my younger days, I slept like a log. After my mom got sick, I became a light sleeper. Whenever she coughs in the middle of the night, I'd get up to bring her a glass of water. But let them do what they can on their own so that it will improve their self-esteem and prevent muscle atrophy. My mom slowly improved and can sit up. She learned to take a bath and change clothes using one hand. Of course, we buy her blouses that has no buttons. You can offer to give them a massage, buy their favorite food or drink. You can also ask what are some things that they still want to do and help them achieve that. It's one way of motivating them to continue living in spite of the challenges. For my mom, who has been chronically ill for 34 years, it's traveling. From time to time, she'd say, oh, I'm dying. I jokingly tell her, mom, if you die, you can go to Japan with us next year. We went there last 2015 and she wants to go back. So hopefully after the pandemic eases, we can go back to Japan again. How to take care of a family member with chronic illness? Tip number one, be extra understanding. Tip number two, be extra patient. Tip number three, be extra caring. If you're blessed by this video, please like, subscribe, and click on the notification button and do share this to others. You can also leave a comment below to share your experience in taking care of a chronically ill family member. Please follow Adjusting Your Heart in Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Signal GCTV 185. Take care, everyone.